Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fur video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF extended model for today's uh, fur video. So this is our 30-day uh, European outlook. Actually, we look at weeks 5 and 6 as well, so it's like a 6 weeks European outlook. But, um... Traditionally, it always was uh, a 30-day forecast. So I shall get on with that for you very shortly. Just say that the first video release day was our 7 a.m. forecast. We also uh, released an update for the Bank Holiday Weekend, including lots of events and festivals that will be taking place over that Bank Holiday Weekend. We've got a 10 to 14 day with all our record features coming up later on this afternoon. Please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Right, so let's have a look at this then, shall we? We're going to begin with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly uh, for uh, for Europe. So here we go. It's going to take us from the 16th through to 23rd of August. The uh, coming week, or this week, I suppose, we'll have high pressure dominating across western parts of Europe with low pressure uh, across northern and northeastern parts of Europe and also some lower pressure beginning to appear through these uh, southern and southeastern parts of Europe where it's been so exceptionally hot over the past few weeks. It looks like things might be start starting to turn just a little bit cooler and a little bit more unsettled down in that southeastern corner of Europe. Um, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly Again, it shows above average heights extending down the western side of Europe, below average heights in the north and the northeast of Europe. And uh, so you can uh, clearly see that the most settled weather will be across western parts of Europe. The most unsettled weather will be with this trough of low pressure in the north and in the northeast. Then the southeastern corners, we lose the ridge of high pressure. It might start cooling down and turning a little bit more unsettled. Temperature anomalies, <coughs> excuse me, temperature anomalies for uh, week one from the 16th to the 23rd of August uh, look like this. So generally it's cooler than average in many northern western parts of Europe. So we've got Scandinavia uh, and, and like in the northeast of Europe looking cooler than average. Although we've got Ireland and the UK a little bit warmer than average. But generally sort of France, low countries, Germany, Denmark uh, and then going up to Sweden, Norway are uh, all cooler than average. Poland as well below average temperature there. So the vast majority of northern Europe actually is cooler than average uh, this week. Southern Europe is still quite warm, but not as hot as it has been. So Italy over the Adriatic towards the Balkans, and then uh, down to the southeast of Europe. We're still largely above average, really, with the temperatures, but, but nowhere near as hot, nowhere near as extreme as it has been, implying that a cool down is, uh, you know, taking place. Also back to Spain and North Africa, it looks uh, very warm to uh, quite hot through there. But again, probably not quite as hot as it has been over the past uh, week or two. Very, very warm uh, up across northern and northwestern parts of Russia, though. Um, Precipitation-wise, look like this. Most areas are drier than average, but it is wet and average in the north and northeast. So, again, vast uh, areas of Scandinavia, around the Baltic Sea, into that northeastern corner of Europe, above average precipitation there. Otherwise, many areas are drier than average. Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal, drier than average. And then going over through the Med, you know, most areas are drier than average there. Southeastern Europe, around the Balkans. To the Black Sea again, driving average through there. So, still pretty dry, but unsettled or more unsettled in the north of Europe. Right, that takes through to week two, which will be the 23rd to the 30th of August. We set up a Scandinavian high uh, in this last week of uh, August. So, high pressure sets up over Scandinavia, lower pressure towards the south, southwest of Europe. Winds will be going into the east. Uh, with that. So easterly winds around um, a Scandinavian high brings uh, the, the, the driest and warmest weather back in to uh, northern parts of Europe. Um, that's how the 500 millibar height anomaly looks, again with above average heights in the west 
and the north of Europe below average heights in the east of the Europe again and with this we'll be bringing in wind from an easterly direction across many northern and, and central western parts of Europe uh, so that's where the warmest temperatures will be with this trough of low pressure in the east so could be cooler and it could be more unsettled through there so week two temperature anomalies uh, warm up across western parts of Europe quite significantly so actually so much of western Europe is going uh, warmer than average in this week Ireland, UK, France, down to Spain and Portugal hotter than average through there uh, but most parts of the men especially the central bowl of the Med to Italy, uh, looking warmer than average. The southeastern corner is nearer normal uh, with temperatures through there. So again, not as hot as it has been from that eastern part of the Med. I mean, going north, it's actually still a bit cooler than average in these eastern uh, regions. So like Poland, Ukraine to Black Sea, cooler than average through there. And in the northeast Europe as well, uh, around the Baltic Sea and to the northwest of Europe, below average temperatures through there. I would expect Scandinavia to be a little bit warmer than that under that area of high pressure, uh, to be honest. But uh, it may take a while, you know, to, to lift the temperature up, I suppose. Um, Precipitation-wise, uh, for week two, 23rd to 30th of August. Obviously, you can see where the Scandinavian high is sitting, because that's where the driest weather is up there over Scandinavia. So that's where we've got the high pressure centred. Um, it's also rather dry and average down to the southwestern part of Europe and in the southeastern part of Europe as well. Near normal pre precipitation uh, through, through like France over towards the Black Sea. So it's a little bit more unsettled, I think, through these central portions. And then Ireland and the UK, again, a little bit on the drier than average side. Right, week three will be the 30th of August to the 6th of September. More changes taking place this week as uh, we lose that Scandinavian high. Looks like uh, some of the ridge is collapsing into the east and south east of Europe, which could start to pull hotter air back up the eastern side again. Also, some of the ridge uh, seems to be going towards Greenland, so obviously that could start to bring cooler air in to uh, northern parts of Europe. There's a little bit of low pressure developing close to the UK, uh, particularly Scotland uh, as well. Otherwise, pressure is uh, weakening. 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. So uh, we take the high pressure of the above average heights up towards Greenland. We also have a trough of below average heights uh, going out towards western parts of Russia. Otherwise, you know, from a 500 millibar height anomaly perspective, not much to go on there actually in uh, week three. But I think it's probably a more unsettled week for, for northern Europe in particular. Temperature-wise, uh, still rather above average, particularly warm through the Mediterranean uh, again. So from Spain back to Italy and the Adriat Adriatic, significantly warmer through there. Not as hot, though, uh, through Greece and Turkey. Black Sea a little bit cooler than average, as is western parts of Russia. Uh, and they're just a bit above average through Ireland and the UK. But most parts of northern western uh, Europe um, uh, have no signal or, or are average. Weak free precipitation anomaly is a weakening signal, but possibly suggests something a little bit more unsettled through here, I think. So from like Scotland and Ireland going over towards eastern, northeastern parts of Europe, just was a little bit more unsettled there. A bit driving average around Spain and the Med, and driving average through the southeastern corner of Europe as well. I think for Northern and West Europe, that's probably a more unsettled week as we go into the start of September and cooler as well. And, and then southern Europe probably dry and warmer. And the southeast of Europe might be getting quite hot again. Uh, right, go through to week four, which is the 6th through to the 13th of September. And we're looking quite unsettled now across western parts of Europe. Low pressure here through the west of Europe. Some high pressure very weakly around the Black Sea. Otherwise, again, not all that much to go on. But it definite, definitely looks like it's a more unsettled uh, weakness. Um in the western part of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly also looks quite unsettled. Look at this below average heights in over the UK and Ireland with wings obviously coming in off the Atlantic. That will bring rain to the western part of uh, Europe in particular. Temperature anomaly is close to or slightly above average in the west of Europe. It's not a particularly big deviation. Southern Europe uh, strongly signaled to still be significantly warmer than average, a bit cooler than average over towards the Black Sea. And again, otherwise, uh, no particular signal precipitation-wise for week four. 
it does look a bit wetter across northern and western uh, Europe. So maybe we're going to have an unsettled first half to September in the north and west, west of uh, Europe. So slightly above average rainfall uh, for those areas, albeit it is a relatively weak signal because we're talking about week four. Otherwise, no signal uh, for, the rest, for the rest of Europe. I suppose southern Europe is likely to be um, quite dry and northern and western Europe likely to be quite unsettled. Right, so that's the 30-day uh, forecast done. Let's just go through weeks five and six data because why not? So this is week five, which is the 13th to the 20th of September. Another unsettled week through many parts of Europe. This could be a notably unsettled September coming up, uh, if this is right, through, through many, particularly western parts of Europe. So the UK, Ireland, we might get, you know, really quite unsettled September, which is quite unusual. We normally associate September with being a dry sort of month, an extension of summer. Um, but September can be very unsettled uh, sometimes. It's been a while since we have one, but September can be a, quite a wet month. And uh, it looks like this is what the ECM extended model is going for today anyway. There's a bit of high pressure across the far north of Europe. It's like a northern blocking type uh, thing. So high pressure north Scandinavia and going up to northwestern Russia. Otherwise, most parts of Europe are under low pressure. Uh, in week five, the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly again looks unsettled through the west of Europe. Higher pressure is building or trying to in the far north of Europe. But again, most parts of Europe look quite unsettled. Uh, the week five temperature anomaly still a bit above average uh, temperatures through uh, far north of Europe and down across southern Europe. Otherwise, not all that much of a signal. Week five uh, precipitation anomaly again looks quite wet through like France, Germany, Low Countries, Ireland, probably UK included uh, as well. Scandinavia looks a little bit drier, but definitely sort of a western part of Europe looking quite wet. And then finally we get through to week six, which will be the 20 to 27th of September. We look like that. Very weak signals by this point, but possibly a little bit of a change uh, with maybe hints of some higher pressure developing across northern and western parts of Europe. Let's have a look at 500 millibar height anomaly. Uh, so yeah, the trough low pressure being forced back into the Atlantic a little bit, I think, being blocked by this high pressure setting up over Scandinavia. Uh, temperature anomalies get a bit warmer through the western, northwestern part of Europe, uh, although it is a weak signal. And precipitation wise, if it's going to refresh, it is. Well, it still looks a little bit unsettled actually through the UK and Ireland, to be honest. So even there, we're still a bit a bit wetter than average. Northern Europe probably rather dry, and looking rather dry through uh, southern, uh, southwestern parts of Europe as well. So, quite an interesting update from uh, the ECM uh, extended model uh, this week. It does look as though we might, you know, rather unexpectedly, it is a change what we've seen from the ECM over previous days, of course, over previous weeks, uh, we might be setting up quite an unsettled September through northern and western parts of Europe. We'll have to see about that. Um, but uh, definitely, you know, it is, it is all looking quite mixed anyway through uh, northern and western Europe, particularly through the earlier part of uh, September. So we'll see where it all goes. That's your 30-day uh, look ahead. Uh, we'll have a look at the ECM Excel again on Friday, but on Friday, we just focus on the UK and Ireland. But why why European outlook? You know, we always do that on a Tuesday. We'll do another one next week, just a snapshot of what Molly shows. So it could look very different when we look at it again uh, next Tuesday. We're going to be back later on for 10 to 14 day. That's going to include all of the regular features as well. So come back for that then. For this week's EC Extended Forecast, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.